Hi, I'm fishing today at the Yarra River, right in the suburbs of Heidelberg. And uh, I mean, you'd think that this river was just about anywhere uh, in Victoria, and also it looks almost outback. But now, if it's you've in seen my suburbs. previous videos about um, raising worms for fishing, you would have also seen the fact that I actually use some of the worm castings to put into my burley. So today, what I'm using is this here. Now you'll see it's, it's very, very brown, very dark, sandy brown. The reason for that is that I've mixed my standard burley mix with um, a, probably about half a kilo of the castings in my worm farm. Now I've mixed it quite dry because the water here is not flowing fast. I'm using a, 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 um, a burley cage which holds it in, but it's really quite dry so it sends plenty of trail out. But because it's flowing so slowly, most of that's going to land on the bottom. But by using that, you are using a huge attraction for those fish because that smell is very, very strong. So it's also got some worms in there that were sort of unfortunate enough to be caught up in the worm castings when I put it in here. So all of that works very, very well because you're putting the bait out there. And uh, we'll just see how it works today in a place like this where sometimes the fish are hard to get. It is um, pretty shallow. There's a lot of structure in the water. Um, what I've decided to do is actually fish this area here. It's absolutely beautiful and oh, there's, aren't you? So let's just see. I just, I have just, I didn't really cast this thing out properly. Anyway, I just sort of left it in the shallows. I was going to cast it once I worked out where to put it. Okay, so there's, uh, as we expected, Okay, there's carp here today, like this one, not a big fish. Let's just have a look at them. So, no, not a big fish, but a little bit of sport. Jeez, <laughs> he's uh, quite a thick little thing. So obviously there's plenty of, um, there is plenty of food around here. So, um, Look, if you, uh, if you just go down to your local waterway, there's anything you can catch, and um, it's just great fun to... So I've uh, met with uh, Venko, who was fishing at this spot uh, this morning, and uh, after speaking to Venko, who's had some pretty impressive catches here, uh, including a very, very large cod. He just showed me the picture. It was just enormous. But Venko likes to catch carp and make soup from the carp. So Venko, can you just tell me how you actually prepare the carp so that you can make soup from it? First you take the carp and they clean up in the properly, put in the fillet, take in the skin, uh, put it in the water and there for cooking put for 15 there. minutes. Separate it in the garlic, put for me in the hot chili, hot chili, yeah. hot chili and put in the start cooking, red pepper, black pepper, red pepper, black pepper, black yeah. pepper. And after in the salt, you in the cover, you like in there. Some people eat in the more salty, some are less in there. Start cooking in there for another 20 minutes in the soup and they're ready for eating. Okay. And okay. then you just basically, are you boiling it in water? For and boiling it in the water for easy for pulling this uh, okay. bones in. And so until it gets soft? Yeah, and soft in the 15 minutes enough for the after and start the boiling. Okay, Hopefully. and then you can, do you then pull the flesh away from the bones? Yes, I'm taking the meat in the, from the bones, yep. everything one is going in the rubbish. Yep. Another one start in the in the water and uh, for four people a half liter in the wine. Half a White liter wine. of wine in there? Yep. For, for how big how many fillets of fish would you put half a liter of wine in for? Depends on the fish you catch in the you catch in the big fish you take in just in the deer meat in there. Not taking the bones in the in the ribs. Oh okay I see. So yeah. Yeah. depends yeah. on the coming what size in the fish yeah. in there. Okay then. For the Four people need in the one kilo fish enough in there. Okay, and so then you you add all of the spices, your ingredients, everything. Um, uh, okay, and then you cook it again with all of those. Yes, and cooking all together in yep. there, or taking the properly and the smell in there. The yeah. Okay. Taste. Okay. And the salt, how much you like in there, you put in the salt in there. Right. Okay. And hot chili. I'm uh, using more in the hot chili. I'm liking the hot in the soup in there. Okay, so you like the hot yeah. chili. Okay, gotcha. And then, do you add anything else to it, like vegetables or anything like that, when you've actually Vegetable, made it? Vegetable, you go in the currants in there. Currants. Yeah. So sweet currants. Yep. 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 So it it sounds great. Currants. So it does show you that um, not only can you eat them, but you can use them for soup. Thanks very much for this. And what? Where would that? Is that a traditional? 
Is that a traditional meal from um, your, your yeah, original country? Yeah, I'm from Macedonia, and for Macedonia, this is a tradition, and people in the use it. Yeah. Okay, so, so traditional meal yeah. from Macedonia. And uh, people in the here have. So Venko is showing me here the uh, the fish that he caught here a couple of years ago. As you can see on his his phone. It was caught on Monday, the 2nd of February, in Bandura. So, this is the spot. And have a look at that an 80, 70, uh, sorry, 87 centimeter cod. That is a big you see fish. There's plenty of small fish in the shallows here. I think these are probably Gambusia, mosquito fish, which were introduced. And they're not good because they do actually eat Australian native eggs and things. But wow, there seems to be quite a few of them in there. So these are the things that are introduced and the damage they do is like carp is eating all the, uh, the eggs of our Australian natives so they deplete the population and while some of our natives will feed on these as the, our natives get larger they do a lot of damage before the eggs actually get a chance oh, to hatch. I was just about to pack up and leave and, uh, and I got a fish. Um, I'll just show it to you because I, I didn't have anything ready. Um, after I've had a little bit of a disaster with one of my rods. But anyway, I've just been fishing here. I've got this one. I'll just grab it and show you. These are not big fish, but at least it was uh, catching something today. It was quite a disaster with uh, some of the things that happened. Whoa. And I'm just trying to pick him up now. It's just not that easy. It's not a big one. It just doesn't want to be picked up. Okay, so... That's what I've got. Just caught this one in this, this water here. Now, just this very second. Um, but what had happened is much smaller ones, the carp than these, have been taking our bait all day. Anyway, I got a bit complacent, so I, uh, I left my rods. I went round the corner just to have a check out if there was another spot. I came back and one of my rods was gone. Uh, the rod holder was sort of pushed over and uh, obviously, and you could see where the the, uh, the rod had gone into the water. So you've got to be really careful about that. <laughs> Whoops, sorry fish. Anyway, um, so what's happened today is I've, I've lost one of my rods and they actually, they've got the EVA uh, handles, so they do actually float. But um, this thing's just been taken away. It's probably got wedged under a log or something like that. So um, just as a, um, a, a bit of a, a trap for young players, make sure that uh, your, your rods are sort of secured and don't leave them. I do have a bit of a, a habit of talking and not watching my rods, rods at times, and uh, I've really learned a good lesson from that today. <laughs> anyway, we'll see how we go.